The third common misconception today is the religion of Islam was spread by the sword. Islam comes from the word salam, which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word silm, which means to submit your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you translate Islam was spread by the sword, it means peace was spread by the sword. It is rather contradicting. Peace was spread by the sword. And if we analyze every country in the world, it has a police force. This police force, it uses violence sometimes against the antisocial elements to maintain peace in that country. This police force, its job is to use force or violence against the antisocial elements so that peace will prevail in the country. Similarly, in Islam, it's a religion of peace. It's a religion that spreads peace. But as a last resort, if there are certain antisocial elements who are trying to create corruption in the land, trying to create mischief in the land, violence can be used as a last resort to maintain peace in the world. And the reply to this allegation that Islam was spread by the sword is very well given by a famous historian by the name of Delacy O'Leary. He writes in the book Islam at the Crossroad on page number eight, he writes, history makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. The legend of Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. We Muslims, we ruled Spain for about 800 years. Later on, the Crusaders came. They wiped out the Muslims. There was not a single Muslim who could openly give the Adhan. We Muslims, we have been the lord of the Arab lands for the past 1400 years. For a few years, the Britishers came. For a few years, the French came. But overall, we have been the master, the lord of the Arab land for the past 1400 years. Yet today, there are more than 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians. Coptic Christian means Christians since generations. These 14 million Arabs who are Coptic Christians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. We Muslims ruled India for more than a thousand years. Today, more than 80% of the Indians, they are non-Muslims. These more than 80% non-Muslims in India, they are giving shahada that Islam was inspired by the sword. If we wanted, we could have forced every non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the sword. But we didn't do it. Islam does not permit us to do that. These more than 80%, 800 million non-Muslims in India, they are bearing witness, they are giving shahada that Islam was inspired by the sword. Today, the country which has the maximum number of Muslims, Indonesia, more than 200 million Muslims, which Muslim army went to Indonesia? Which Muslim army went to Malaysia, which has more than 50% Muslims? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? Which sword? It is the sword of the intellect. As Thomas Carlyle, the famous historian, he writes in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship, according to him, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his hero number one. That yes, we have to get the sword. Where will a person get a sword? Initially, every idea originates in one man's head. In one human being, it lives alone. It will little good that it picks up a sword and propagates it. He has to first find the sword. Thomas Carlyle is talking about the sword of the intellect. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, the ayah I started my talk with, Allah says, Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah, wal mu'azit al hasna, wajadun billati ahasan. Invite all to the way of thy Lord with the wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. There was an article that came in Eder Digest Almanac Yearbook, 1984, which was repeated in the Plain Truth magazine. It gave the statistics of the increase in the major world religion in a span of 50 years, from 1934 to 1984. And number one maximum increase in percentage was Islam, 235%. Christianity 
only 47%. I'm asking the question, which war took place between 1934 and 1984 in the span of 50 years, which forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam? Which war? Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. I am asking, who is forcing these Americans to accept Islam at the point of the sword? Who is forcing the Europeans, the Britishers, to accept Islam at the point of the sword? And do you know, the media always says that the women in Islam are subjugated. Do you know, amongst those people accepting Islam, whether it be in America or Europe, or any part of the world, two-thirds of them are women. If Islam subjugates the women, then why will the American women accept Islam? Why will the European women accept Islam? Because they know that Islam has the solution to the problem of humankind. And whatever the media does, I believe in the verse of the Quran, as Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 54, Allah khairul makreen. They planned and plotted, Allah too planned. Allah is the best of planners. Salman Rushdie, a citizen of this country, born in my city, Bombay, citizen of this country. He wrote a book, Satanic Verses Against Islam, against the Prophet. Act is wrong, it should be condemned. Net result, many non-Muslims want to read what is the Satanic Verses. They read the Quran and many of them accepted Islam. Intention was wrong, act was wrong, and result, Wallahu Khairul Makhreen. Allah is the best of planners. What happened on 11th of September? World Trade Center, more than 5,000 human beings were killed, innocent. It is wrong. Act has to be condemned. The media had a hype against the Muslims, war on terror. People don't know that what is this religion? Quran became one of the best sellers in USA. And according to a report in the span of 9 to 10 months, 34,000 Americans accepted Islam. According to Johan Ridley, in the span of 10 months in Europe, 22,000 Europeans accepted Islam. Normally, it should be the opposite that, you know, Dawa should go down. Alhamdulillah. How much the media is trying to suppress Islam and malign Islam? Alhamdulillah, the tables have been turned over. Alhamdulillah. We Muslims should not be apologetic. We should speak the truth. We should stand for truth. We should propagate this religion of peace. And Allah gives a promise in no less than three different places. Allah says in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 9. And Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 33. Huwa lazi arthala rasoolahu biluda wa deen al-haq liyu zira wa ala deen kulli. Malakari al-mushrikoon. Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions, over all the other isms, over all the other ways of life. However much the mushrik don't like it. And Allah repeats the message in Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 28. Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other ways of life. All the other isms. And enough is Allah as a witness. Allah does not require you and me to make his deen prevail. The rubbish that we are, Allah does not require you and me. Allah himself is sufficient. Allah doesn't require us. Allah has given us the opportunity to make here while the sun is shining. Do you think that if we don't speak about Islam, Islam will not spread? Do you think Islam is spreading because we are doing dawah? Believe me, wallah, we Muslims are not doing our job. What is happening is because of Allah, we don't at all get the credit. We don't get the credit. We aren't conveying the message according to me. We aren't. We are afraid to open our mouth to speak the truth. So Allah is telling in these verses, this deen is going to prevail with or without you, with or without me. The rubbish that we are. He is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and to earn a prophet's reward. And I would like to end this answer of this misconception with the quotation from Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson said, people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Oh.